Okay, so now that we have set up our LightWrite file the way we want with our vocabulary and our show headers, um, it's time to get LightWrite to talk to Vectorworks. So I'm going to switch over to my waiting for Godot file. Um, I created this file purely for the purposes of this exercise. This is not a suggestion that this is what the lighting design in the channel should look like. Um, so please don't use it as some kind of crazy template. Um, but the first thing we need to do is um, go into File, Document Settings, Spotlight Preferences. So what we need to do now is turn on the data exchange between Vectorworks and Lightrite. In here you'll find a section that's called Lightrite. In the older versions of Vectorworks you'll find these different sections as sort of tabs um, going across the top. I think in 2020 it changed into this column view. Um, and we want to turn on Use Automatic Lightrite Data Exchange. Uh, the first time you do this it will automatically tick Perform a Complete Export on Exit. This little function will become important later on when we um, potentially have to deal with syn synchronization issues. Um, so this is worthwhile noting that this is where that is because we might have to come back to it um, and I'll show you that later. We're also going to tick include inventory just um, so we can have a look at uh, what that does later on as well. Uh, file path, I'm going to leave same location as the file so that the XML file that this um, data exchange creates um, lands in the same folder as my Vectorworks file, which is also the same folder as my LightWrite file, if you've done it um, according to the instructions in the first screencast. Um, you could put it somewhere else, but I would avoid doing that because you don't want to create uh, more synchronization issues for yourselves later on. Um, it's always a good idea to keep them together in one file, in one folder. Um, you can have a look here at which fields are going to be exported to Lightrite. Um, I would I would I would leave that as a default, unless you have created custom fields in Vectorworks, which you might want to do for particular. Um, show purposes. Um, so if you have created any kind of custom things that you want to uh, export over to Lightrite, then this is where you would set that. Usually leave it as a default. Um, and then we can press OK. Now let's have a very quick look in our folder. If we have a look in the lighting folder, you can now see that we have our waiting for Godot Lightplot Vectorworks file the waiting for Godot light write file that we created earlier and now a waiting for Godot LP XML file. The XML file will always have the exact same name as the Vectorworks file. Now we can switch over to light write and we can turn on the exchange. So we want to click on the Vectorworks symbol at the top right of your main uh, window. You get the data exchange set up. Uh, we want to tick Use Data Exchange. Field mapping, this is where you could do custom uh, field mapping across from Spotlight into Lightrite. Again, you don't really need to have a look at these at all unless you've created custom fields. I would leave everything as a default. Um, and you can also, for the moment, leave all of these settings as a default. Um, so now we need to choose our Vectorworks XML file which is a this one. Press open. Um, it automatically goes into field mapping here and tells us what's being mapped from Spotlight into what worksheet column in Lightrite. Again, unless you've done custom stuff, just leave it as a default. And I'm going to press OK here. And it's going to think about this for a moment. You can now see that the Vectorworks symbol here has gone red. And we have the information from our Vectorworks file synchronized over into our Lightrite file. Uh, by default, it will sort it, it will show you everything sorted by position. And you can see here, this is where um, we have everything sorted by position. Now the order this happens in, uh, I believe is the order that these positions were drawn in rather than any kind of numerical order, um, but we can sort that out and make it um, the order we want it to be for our drawing later. Now this is where you can see that it's very useful uh, to use unit numbers in Vectorworks. 
So if we're looking at our Vectorworks file, you can see I've put in a whole bunch of PCs, for example, here. Um, and I haven't given them channel numbers yet. As a designer, I don't tend to give my units channel numbers until a bit later in the process. Um, I might write down things like what purpose they are and what color they are before I even number them um, because I want my numbering system to make sense and if I start that too early then I might end up with uh, situations where I don't have enough of a gap in a particular range of numbers so I would usually number a bit later. But what that means for this synchronization is that when I bring this over, so this is one, two, three, five, this is LX5. If I bring that over into Lightrite um, and I look at my LX5, um, I've got a whole bunch of PCs here, but there's no way of telling them apart except for the unit number because I haven't got any other information in them yet. Um, so unit numbering is a very useful thing to do when you're synchronizing between Vectorworks and Lightrite because it helps you identify individual units in this drawing um, because otherwise I don't know which PC that would be. And uh, we're going to look at um, how to do some more numbering next.